The year is 1977, and a ten-year-old boy by the name of Marlon Lowe is playing outside of his home in Lawndale, Illinois, USA. It's a summer evening like any other. His mother is outside keeping an eye on him and the other children, while his father is barbecuing. Everything is normal, when suddenly, little Marlon Lowe notices he has left the ground. His feet dangling below him, he sees the ground getting further and further away. He becomes aware of what feels like two clawed vice grips clutching his shoulders with eye-watering strength. His mother runs toward him, but not before the boy has been carried 30 feet or so across the front yard. She screams and charges at the flying beast, protection instincts taking full control. She succeeds in fending off the creature, and the boy drops to the floor. He then looks up to see an enormous Thunderbird. The Thunderbird, a large flying cryptid, said to be similar in appearance to a bird of prey. Historically, they have been said to live all across the Americas, from Alaska and Canada, down to Mexico, and similar stories have originated from other parts of the world as well. The Thunderbird, in this account from 1977, was reported by Marlon Lowe's mother, Ruth Lowe, along with several witnesses, to have an eight-foot wingspan, along with a six-inch hooked bill, a large black body, and three claws on each foot. The incident in Lawndale, Illinois, USA was not the first, however. Sightings of these creatures go back to antiquity, and have a prominent place in ancient Native American legends. Tribes from all across the Americas have passed down stories of Thunderbirds, some of which talk about giant birds large enough to pluck whales out of the sea and carry them away to their nests. The old legends also state that while these gigantic birds were extremely dangerous and powerful animals, they were also seen as benevolent nature spirits, and they sometimes assisted the tribes in their search for food during periods of famine. Is it possible that the ancient tribes, all those thousands of years ago, were in fact capable of taming and training Thunderbirds? Like other birds of prey, they would have been intelligent hunters, and as we all know, it's possible to tame certain modern hunting birds, such as eagles or falcons. It may be possible, that the Native Americans of antiquity were able to train Thunderbirds to help them as part of their hunting and gathering strategies. Sightings of these large bird-like creatures became known to the wider world when people began settling further west in the United States and Canada. One of the most famous reports is from 1890, where a large bird was shot and killed by two Arizona cowboys. Curiously, the surviving descriptions of this event state that the giant bird they killed had an alligator-like head and possessed no feathers. While many modern cryptozoologists consider thunderbirds to be giant birds of prey, a popular point of view among some is that they are actually surviving pterosaurs that have been misidentified, or described as birds simply because witnesses were unfamiliar with the pterosaur's appearance, and had no other way of explaining what they had seen. Thunderbird sightings are still being reported in recent and modern times. In the early 1940s, writer Robert R. Lyman spotted a Thunderbird sitting on a road near Cudersport, Pennsylvania. It soon took to the sky, spreading its 20-foot wingspan. In 1948, several witnesses along the Illinois-Missouri border sighted a condor-like bird about the size of a Piper Club aeroplane. In 1969, the wife of a Clinton County, Pennsylvania sheriff saw an enormous bird over Little Pine Creek. She said its wingspan appeared to be about as long as the creek was wide, about 75 feet. In 1970, several people in Pennsylvania saw the gigantic bird soaring towards the Jersey Shore. It was dark coloured, and its wing spread was almost like that of an aeroplane. In September of 2001, a 19-year-old Pennsylvania native witnessed an enormous winged creature flying over Route 119 in the town of South Greensburg. The witness stated that they noticed what sounded like flags flapping in a thunderstorm, 
and quickly looked up at the sky. Upon doing so, the eyewitness saw what appeared to be a gigantic bird with a wingspan estimated to be between 10 and 15 feet, with a 3 foot long head. The witness told researcher Dennis Smeltzer that the huge black or greyish brown bird passed over at about 50 or 60 feet. I wouldn't say it was flapping its wings gracefully, the witness told Smeltzer but almost horrifically flapping its wings very slowly, then gliding above the passing big rig trucks. In May of 2013, again in the state of Pennsylvania, two friends were walking through the woods near Burn Athen Castle when they suddenly noticed an enormous bird sitting in a tree. One of the witnesses, by the name of Anthony, said, It was extremely loud, and I glanced up and saw a huge black bird, it was sitting above us and we seemed to startle it. It flew about 100 feet to a nearby branch. Its wingspan was at least 10 feet, and judging how far it was, it looked to be around 4 feet tall. As you can see, Traveller, Thunderbird sightings go back thousands of years and are still being made today. While sightings aren't an everyday occurrence, they happen regularly enough to make their existence a very real prospect. Larger creatures tend to be fewer in number than smaller ones, and more spaced out, so it could be that the Thunderbird is just an incredibly and increasingly rare creature. But just because they're rare, doesn't mean that you'll never encounter one. Keep a close eye on your children while they innocently play outside, Traveller, lest they be carried away by the Thunderbird. <laughs>